Hi, this is Amber from the A-Team. I'm here today to talk to you about the new Google Sites. So if you haven't been able to make a training here at the Academy, and you'd just like to learn about Google Sites on your own, then you're in the right place. So join us today as we talk about Google Sites, how to build one, how to customize it, and how to publish it to the web so that you can communicate with your students and parents. Before we get started today, I wanted to show you where to go to get the resources you need in case you need a guide or directions for how to do the things that we're going to talk about. So if you'll go to our Google Apps Support site, and if you don't know how to get there, here's a shortcut. If you'll go to goo.gl slash capital L capital C capital Z lowercase x 3 7. This will bring you to our Google Apps Support site. Once you're at the site, you'll want to go to learn about the apps, and then you can scroll down to Google Sites. Once you click on Google Sites, the link with the directions is right here, Google Sites Basics. This guide will walk you through how to create the Google Site, how to customize it, and all the things that we're going to go over today. However, back on the site, there are some sites tips from Google. There's also information about how to add an email link to your website so that you comply with the HCPS policy. And there's also directions on how to answer an email that comes from the web form. If you're still using the old Google Sites, there's also the guide here. There's also the video that we made on the old Google Sites available if you would like to continue to use the old Google Sites for now. Today's session, however, focuses on the new Google Sites. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you'll want to go to your Rubik's Cube and go to Sites. Once you've gotten to the Google Sites page, you'll notice on the left a link to the new Google Sites. You'll want to click on this link to take you to the new Google Sites page. You'll notice right away that it's very different, and you'll see there are tiles on this page that show the sites that you currently have. Well, if this is the first time you've ever made a site with the new Google Sites, your page will be blank. It also may come up with a tutorial that you can skip if you'd like, or you can go through that tutorial before you proceed. You'll notice on the bottom left corner, there's a link to go back to the classic sites. So if you'd like to go back to the old Google Sites where your other sites exist, you can go there. There's a plus sign on the right side at the bottom, and this is where we'll go to make our new site. However, before we proceed, I'd like to answer a question that you may be thinking about. If you've spent some time building a site with the previous version of Google Sites or the classic version. This site will not transfer to the new sites with a simple click. You'll need to rebuild the site, meaning you'll make the site in the new sites, make your pages, and then you can copy and paste some of the content over. But it will have a new URL, a new look, and it will not be as simple as a transfer. So let's proceed with making a new Google Site. Okay, so let's click on the plus sign and create a new site. Once the site page opens, the very first thing that I would recommend doing is go up into the top left corner and let's title your site. You're going to want to call this exactly what the purpose of the site is. So if this is your teacher classroom site, you may want to put your name and grade level or your name and your content area. That way it's going to be very specific for the purpose. So I'm going to call this one Miss McMillan's Science Class. This location is the title of your website. In this area, you'll notice that this is your page title. Notice that once I clicked in here, it saved the website title to the top left because that's going to appear on each of your pages. So since this is my first page title, I'm going to say welcome to Ms. McMillan's science class. This is going to be the title of my page. And notice at the top, it's formatted in the title, so it's a large title. 
It's not a heading, it's a title of my page. But I can stretch it out to the side and you'll see there are little guidelines to the left and the right when I'm dragging. So this will make it a little less huge at the top of my page. So before we proceed in adding some things, let's just talk a little bit about um, the dashboard and what kind of tools are there. So on the right side of the dashboard, you'll see three tabs. The Insert tab, which is where you go to insert any type of content into your page. The Page tab, which will show the list of the pages on your website. And the Themes tab, which we'll visit in just a moment. At the top, you'll see an Undo and Redo button. These can be your friends if you make a mistake and you want to undo it quickly. Simply tap the Undo button. There's also another important button at the top, and that's the preview button. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that so that you can see exactly what the site is going to look like. In the preview format, you'll also notice that there are three views at the bottom. The great thing about the new Google Sites is it's automatically friendly on mobile devices. You can even see what your site is going to look like on a tablet and on a a phone so that you can see your site in different sizes. This last one is going to be a large screen or like if you're sitting at your desktop. When you're ready to go back to editing, you simply exit the preview and you'll come back to the editing version. So that preview button is something you'll want to click each time you make a, a significant change to your page so you can see what it's going to look like. To the right of that, you'll have the ability to add editors and we'll look at that later as well as this is your publish button. Your publish button is going to be important when you're ready to publish your website to the web and give your link to your webmaster. Additionally, you'll see this more options button, or we like to call it the corn dog. Next to the corn dog, you'll see the ability to send feedback to Google. So this is still sort of in a new beta kind of version. If you would like to send some feedback to Google of things that you'd like to see or things that you see that aren't working the way that you'd like them to, please send feedback. Google is great about listening to your feedback. There's also a help link that will take you to guides for how to use Google Sites. And that tutorial that popped up in the beginning that you may have had to close, you can always go back and take the tour again in case you need a refresher of how to use it. So now that we've gotten our site titled at the very top, we've given our page title a name. The next thing I'd like to do is take you to the Themes tab. So if you'll click on the Themes tab, now previously there were only three themes available and they've already added some more so this is constantly changing and developing. So what you'll want to do is click on the different types of themes and see which one speaks to you. With each of the themes there's a little bit of a difference. You'll notice there's some colors and styles that come with those. So you can click through them and see which one speaks to you the most. I'm going to choose Vision because I, I like the way that's looking to me right now. After you've chosen the theme, you'll notice there's a color palette across the bottom. These colors apply to menu bars, they apply to headers, headings, so you'll want to pick one that complements the colors that you're planning to use in your site. It's important to note that these colors will remain consistent across your website. You can't choose a different theme on each page, so you'll want to pick one that you really like that will go with the flow of your entire site. After you've chosen the theme style and the color, there's also a font style that you can choose from. Notice these are not names of fonts. They simply are called Bold, Modern, and Classic. These fonts are already web friendly, so you simply will choose the one that looks best with the style of your site. When you've chosen your theme and you're happy with it, then you can proceed to other things. Now, you'll notice that my header, which is the very top of this of every page, um, is has a little picture here. This one has a picture behind it and it has my title on top. Um, when I hover over this, I get the option to choose header type. There are three types of headers. There's one that has the large banner that's typically used on the, the front page or the home page of your site. Then there's the banner page, which is a little smaller. 
That could also be on the, the title page or home page of your website. And then there's one that just has the title for the simpler pages that maybe have a lot of content and you don't want to take up too much room with a banner. This is totally preference whatever you like best. I'm going to choose to use the large banner on this first page and then I'm going to click this back button. I want to show you that you also have the ability to change the image on the top of the website. When you click change image it immediately comes up to a gallery. Google has already placed some images in their gallery that are very web friendly and header friendly. So you'll notice these headers are more like textures or colors. Some are pictures, but they're more artistic pictures, not necessarily a picture of people. Because what you'll notice is since this is in sort of a panoramic style, it's not very tall, but it is very wide, you'll want to choose ones that are more artistic. Um, I've had a couple people who've tried to put a picture of their class here and then what you end up having is a lot of torsos and no heads and no feet. So this is probably better to stick with more of a texture and put pictures that you would like to see on your site perhaps down in the page area instead. So again you can choose from some of these that are here or you could upload your own um, if you have the ability and the knowledge of how to make headers. A lot of people sometimes put things in Canva or some other tools to make uh, large banners that um, are artistic and that may not be in this Google um, gallery. You can add them, but I would do trial or error and also make sure when you choose one, so I'm going to go ahead and choose this one here. When you choose one, make sure after you do that that you go into preview and you you look to see what this looks like in different versions because you'll notice when I go on a tablet it's showing more of my picture and then when I go on the phone it's showing even more and it's actually just a corner of my picture so you'll want to look at all the views so that if you do choose your own image for that heading that you or the header that you make sure that it's going to look good in all views Okay, so now that we've gotten our header, we've chosen our header type, um, and we've chosen our theme, now let's start putting some content on the page. One of the things that's going to happen that I want to explain right away is this, this large white area is going to become filled with boxes, horizontal boxes that are going to house content. I kind of like to think of these as sandboxes and in each of the sandboxes you can put um, different content and later on I'll show you how you can put different content into one box. So what I want to do first is go to the Insert tab and think about what I want to put on my page. So if I wanted to add text, I simply click on Text Box and you'll notice right away I get this little box and when I hover over it you see how it um, kind of lifts off the page to show me that this is a box all its own and I can start typing here just whatever text I'd like to type. So I'm going to say welcome to my site, um, this site is for students and parents and I may have some more other some other content so we'll just imagine that that's awesome content so here I have some content um, there are some tools at the top that I would like to talk to you about um, the first one that I would like to talk to you about is this normal text drop down you will get normal text when you insert a text box, but there may be times that you need to create headings to your pages. So I'm going to choose heading here and you'll see what happens. That makes it larger, it brings some prominence to it, but the main part of my text I'm going to always leave as normal text. I would never put all my text in the page on title or all of it on heading or all of it on subheading just to make it larger. Um, the web um, version version of this Google Sites kind of adjusts it um, how it needs to look on the different mobile devices. So you'll want to keep the majority of your text normal, but do separate those headings and subheadings using the heading and subheading format. So maybe um, underneath this I want to do a, a, an area for parents, and maybe under here I want to do an area for students and add some content for there. So to show you how this works, I used heading here. I could come down here and use a subheading. So it separates this area 
into two different areas. You'll also notice some other tools that I have. So I have the ability to do some alignment if I wanted to align it um, left, center, justified. Um, then I could also add a numbered list or a bulleted list. So these options are always there. I can also choose to select a word and make it bold or italics as well. But do use these tools to make your text really clean. You also have the ability to add a link. So if I wanted to add a link, for example, um, learn about um, Google, I could highlight a word, choose my link, and type in the link address. Now this is not one I would ever use, I'm just using this as an example. After you choose to make it a link, you can either copy and paste this from the page that you're on or type it in and click apply. Now you have a link and you'll notice that when I hover over it, it kind of shows that it's going to go somewhere, that it's active. If you ever wanted to edit it, you would simply click on it, click the pencil and change the web address if you needed to or you can delete that link as well or, and remove it from the page. The um, corn dog menu also has the ability that if you needed to do strike through font or clear some formatting or if you know how to do coding for um, font formatting, you can use that as well. Typically, I find that everything I need to put in text is in this box um, and it works really well. So I'm going to click outside of that and say that I've finished this part, but that I would really like to put an image on my site other than what's at the top of the page. I would like to put an image in the middle. So you can also go back over to the insert menu and choose images. You can upload your image. If you know the URL of the image, you can come here and paste it. You can also do some searching for images. And I do want to point out that if you're inside Google Sites and you click on search when inserting an image, that the results that are shown are labeled for commercial reuse with modification. So this means that the pictures come up are supposed to be labeled to be reused on a website and you can use with modifications. So these are usually safe to use. Also, you can search in your albums. If you have images that are already in your photo albums, you can do those here. And if you have an image just in your Google Drive in a folder, you can find it there as well. So if I wanted to go into a folder in my drive and insert a picture, so I'm going to choose this picture, actually I'm going to choose this one here, select the picture, then I've got my picture inside my page. You'll notice that once I insert it, it's going to have this little active box around it that has some corners, so you do have the ability to drag your image and make it larger or smaller. At the top, you'll also get some menu items. There is a cropping tool, so if you wanted to crop out a certain section of the picture, you could move your picture and crop it. So if I only want these people that are in the cafeteria, I can crop it. Then if I decide I don't like that, I can always choose uncrop, which will bring it right back to where it was. I can also decide to make this picture a link. Maybe if you teach um, lower level students or students that have special needs where a picture would be much easier for them to find, to click on a link and go somewhere, then perhaps words, um, you can choose to make this a link. And it works just like the link above that we did with Google where I would just put in the link. So let's say I want this one to go to the Henderson County Maine website and I click apply. So now that means when this picture is clicked on, it's going to take the visitor to this location. And again, you click on the pencil to edit, click on the trash can to remove. There are some other options down in the corn dog that I would like to point out. There is a replace image, so if you've made a mistake and you don't really want to get delete your picture and start over, you just want to replace it, you can click replace and come up with the same areas that you had before to search for. But this is the one that I really want to talk to you about, adding alternative text. Um, the ADA, America's 
Americans with Disabilities Act talks about making sure websites are friendly for those people who have special needs or disabilities that are specific in this case to someone who has a vision disability. Um, adding alternative text is going to help when someone with um, lower vision or limited vision is at, on a website and is having the page read aloud to them, um, they're not going to be able to really see that picture, but if you add some alternative text, it will describe the picture. We do recommend that you do that for every picture that you put into your site. So I'm going to click on Add Alternative Text, and all I have to do is type in a description. It doesn't have to be long, but I'm going to say, you know, people in cafeteria, um, this is going to be the description of my picture. Depending on the picture, put in your description and simply click apply. Just make it a habit to do that with every picture that you put in so you'll be sure to comply with those recommendations of the ADA. So I've got my picture in. I'm going to click in this bottom white area. So I've got a box here that has text, a box here that has a picture. I want to go down to the next box and embed a URL and let's talk about what that means. You can actually place a box on your website that shows a little preview of what might be on a website and gives a link so that you can go to an external site. This is different from simply placing a link to another site on the page. So I'm going to do the embed URL and I'm going to say that maybe um, we are going to the Biltmore House and I want to put a little box in here that kind of embeds that site in my page from the web. Now you'll notice that this pulled in the site, there's a little picture, there's the title, and then there's the web address there. So it's a little different than simply placing the link on the page. So I'm going to click add so you see what this looks like. Now I have a little description and this is the description that comes from that site. I will tell you that not all sites are able to do this as I'm going to go and try to embed another URL of a site that I know does not work with this so you can see what happens. So here is the Henderson County main site. When you type it into the URL, um, it's going to search and see if this is a site that, that can be embedded and you'll notice that there's a note that says, I'm only going to show you the link because we don't have um, the ability to embed this site. So at this point, if it were me, I would cancel because I can just add a link myself in a text box without having to do this. But to show you what this would look like if I went ahead and added it, it's just going to be a box with the link in it. So for me, this is very unattractive, so I probably would just close that, add a text box and say, visit the Henderson County Public Schools website, highlight it, and link it exactly like we did up here. So this is really only helpful if you have sites that pull in that content. So to show you something that we can customize about this is I'm going to click on it. You'll notice I do get some ability to um, drag and make this larger and smaller, but I also have a settings icon. And on the settings icon, I can actually, because this is called a link card, I can change the title. So notice how this says built more. If I want this to say learn more, about the Biltmore House, I can do that and it will change momentarily. I can also decide whether or not I want to show an image with this link card or whether or not I want to show the title or whether or not I want the description shown. You'll just have to look at it and see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and leave all of these and say done and you'll notice now I've been able to title this link card. To delete it, you would simply click on it and click the trash can. Again, that's embedding a URL. Uh, many people have asked us, with this new website, can I get HTML code and embed a widget that I've created at another website? At the, this time, that is not possible. So if it's something that you are just, you have to have and it's something that you really need on your website, you may want to stick with the classic sites until that's possible from the new sites. We're not 100% sure that's going to be available, but if that's something you really need, then um, this embed URL tool is not what you're going to use for that. 
Okay, so I've got um, some text here, I've placed an image, and I've also used the embed URL. There's also the option to simply upload something to your page. So if you had something on your thumb drive, an external hard drive, or on the hard drive of your computer or your desktop, you can select it and upload it to your page here. So what I do want to focus some more time on is how um, Google works beautifully together. And so if I have something in Google Drive, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, any of those things, I can easily put these into my website. So I'm going to go through a few of those with you. First of all, if I have something in my drive that I want to place in this page, I simply click From Drive and it will begin to search my drive. So this was this was the direction page to how to make a Google site. So I could click on that and choose insert. You'll notice what happens is it puts an image, a temporary image, into this view so that I can see what it's going to look like on my page. If I want to make it a little smaller, I can. And you'll notice here it looks just like a, just a small little window. So I'm going to preview it because I really want to see what that's going to look like to my visitors. So I'm going to scroll down and I see, oh look, they get a little scroll bar and they can actually read my page or they can click on this icon and it will open it up for them. So I'm going to close this and talk to you a little bit about something I would do. If you're embedding a Google Doc in your page or a Google Sheet or a form, you may want to increase this and make it just a little bit larger so that when they are on the page they don't have to do so much scrolling. This is a little bigger and it makes it a little easier for them to see um, a little more of the page, but you can kind of just determine how you want that to be. You can also see how that's going going to look on a small window. Notice I'm just going to get a link to open it into a new page because on a phone you're not going to be able to really scroll through that document on the web page so it just sort of um, puts a link to open it in, into Google Sheets. On a mobile device it's going to look very similar so that you can scroll through it so if you're on an iPad or other tablet you'll be able to scroll through it that way and then back on the desktop view you'll have that window where again you can scroll. So this makes your page really dynamic because they can scroll on the content of your page as well as scroll to anything that you've embedded from your Google Drive. So that's embedding um, an item from your drive and that could have been any type of item, an image or any other thing that you have in your drive that you want to place in your page. Now let's talk about Drive Folder. If you have a folder that you've made in Google Drive and everything in that folder you want to share on your site, you can actually choose to place an entire folder on your site. So I could click here, I can locate some folders that I want to place on my website, and once you place a folder, it's going to, so if I click images here and insert, this is going to place a link to my folder and you'll notice it shows every single image that's in that folder. So once I view this on the web and scroll down to the folder contents, you're going to see I've now got a window that I can scroll through and see those files. So that would be super helpful if perhaps you've made a folder in your drive that has all the study guides for a particular unit or um, all the um, documents they're going to need for a certain thing. This is a great place to put that. Um, keep in mind that the permissions on these items from your Google Drive have got to match the permissions of your site. So if you're going to put the site on the web so that all your students and all your parents can access it, you're going to need to make sure that the sharing settings on this document and the sharing settings on your folders are set so that anyone with the link can view or public to the web. Um, you'll just want to make sure that they match. Otherwise, when they pull up this page, they're not going to be able to see it. So let's go ahead and place a YouTube video in our page. So you click on the link from the insert menu for YouTube and you could search in the box to find your videos. Also, if you've uploaded any videos to your YouTube channel, you can simply find them here. 
So if you're a YouTube channel user, this is a great way to go ahead and put your YouTube channel videos on your page. But in this case, I'm going to search for mine. Now I happen to have opened the video that I want to use in another tab, so I'm just going to copy the link for this video. This is a Kid President video. And I'm going to go back in this box and paste that link. Then I'm going to click the search icon so it will start searching for that um, particular video. Once it finds the video, you simply click on it once. And if you weren't sure, you could actually click here and open it and make sure. But I always open it in a new tab, make sure it's the right one, and search for it this way so I can make sure that I'm putting the right one in my site. And I'm going to click Select. The great thing about this is this just works. It places the video on the page. You don't have to get an embed code. You don't have to know anything about coding. You just find the video and insert it and there it is. Once you have it there, you can choose to size it. So if you want it to be smaller or larger, um, you can just drag the corners and, and figure out how large you want it on the page. There's also a settings icon for the videos, so you can choose whether to show the controls or hide the controls. Um, if you want it to go out, the, the controls to slide away once the video starts, or if you want to just have it fade, or if you want the controls to be there all the time, that's up to you. You can also even control the color of the progress bar, which is the one that shows how quickly the video is loading. You can also change the title of the video here. So if I wanted this to just be called 20 things we should say more often, I could take off a little bit and, and kind of tweak this um, so that it's going to show the title that I want it to show. And you can decide whether or not you want to show the full screen icon in the bottom corner. Um, I usually leave this on so that people who come to the site, if they need it to be full screen, I say go ahead and view it in full screen, that's fine. Doesn't mean it's going to show full screen on your page immediately, it just means they're going to get a little link to have the ability to watch it in full screen. So then you can click done and your video is going to have the things on it um, that you wanted it to show. So let's look at what this page looks like. So I'm going to preview the video and come down there's my document, I've got my um, box from with my folders, and then I have my video, and you'll notice immediately I could click it right now and play it. So this is um, a really easy way to place YouTube videos. So now let's move on to calendars. Um, oftentimes uh, you have a calendar that you want to put on your website. Perhaps it's a classroom calendar. Um, I am going to point out to you that if you want to know how to make a new calendar um, just for your classroom or just for your website, you can even call it website calendar, um, there are directions on our Google Apps support site on how to create a new calendar. So I'm not going to go through that right now, but I will show you that if you want to embed a calendar, you simply click on calendar and you choose from the calendars that you have access to. And you'll see that um, this particular account has a lot of um, access to different calendars. So if I have a calendar that I want to put on here, so let's see if I've got my classroom calendar. So let's just say my chemistry second period um, is my classroom calendar I want to place and I click insert. It's going to actually show a little bit of a calendar. Now this is a test calendar so there aren't events on it, but you can see how um, I can simply embed my calendar into my site. Now I'm going to go in the gear settings because there's some really cool things that this does that will be super helpful for you. You'll notice when you first insert it that the default is to place it in agenda view. I like to either use month view or week view on a site. I'm a month view person so I can simply change it to month view and they'll still be able to click on and read more information. You can decide whether you want to show the title or not or show the date. I like that because um, I like to be able to see what month this calendar is showing up in. Also whether you want your navigation buttons to show, I say leave them on there so they can easily browse through your site. Um, time zone is not that important, but if you wanted to make sure it was showing, you could. And then um, do you want them to be able to view what's selected? And 
I would say yes. So let's go ahead and click done. So now I have this calendar embedded on my site. So if I go to preview to see what that looks like, I scroll down to the calendar. It's embedding that calendar in my page. So the great thing about this, as opposed to putting a list of the things that are going to happen in my classroom and then having to remember, go to sites, update it, I simply have to just go to the Google Calendar and update it and this is going to automatically place it on my site. So if I went into Google Calendars right now, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, if I go to Google Calendars, and let's say I'm going to put something on my calendar. So I'm going to create something on my calendar and I'm going to put it on the chemistry second period. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on today so you can see how this works. I'm going to put test event, you know, but maybe this is field trip or permission slips due or, or whatever. I can put that here and put some more information here um, and say where it's going to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then I'm going to go back to my site. I'm actually going to refresh my site. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the page where our calendar is. And what you're going to see is that event just shows up on the calendar. I didn't have to come and change it in Google Sites. I actually went to the calendar to change it. So if you do place your calendar on your website, you don't have to go back to your website to edit the calendar. Just go to Google Calendars, put your dates on, and they'll automatically update. So let's go back to editing. You also can add a map. Um, this might be helpful if you're going on a field trip and you wanted to give parents the directions, but you can embed a Google map. I'm going to skip that one because um, that one's probably not going to be used a lot um, by our teachers because the maps to the school are already on the school websites. Underneath um, Google Embed section, there's the Google Docs section. So here you're able to embed a Google Docs, slide sheets, forms, or charts, and all this does is simply pulls up that specific app and only shows you those things. So if I wanted to embed um, a slideshow onto my website, um, it's going to give it a player bar so that it will go through and play. This is actually a really good tool um, if you've made a presentation and it's got student um, information in it and you want it to be able to go on the website um, and be easily played or looked at by parents. Um, I'll show you what this looks like. They're going to receive um, links so that they can click through the links. Um, or it will play on its own. They can also view it full scale. So this is a great way to put in um, slideshows into your website. Um, docs and sheets and forms, um, those are the same. They're just going to embed into your page. So if you have a Google form that you wanted to put into your page, maybe you're collecting um, website information, um, whatever it is that you're wanting to place, um, you can choose your form, insert it onto your page, and you're going to get that menu to drag it smaller or make it larger. You're also going to get um, information uh, on removing it or opening it in a larger window. I'm going to remove this one because that's not actually a public form anyway, so they couldn't have seen it. So you can see that um, I've got lots of options for things to add to my pages. So now that we've inserted them, let's talk about how this looks. For me, this looks very boxy um, in that there's one item in each of these little boxes. So first of all, I want to point out that you can drag your boxes around. So if, for example, I wanted to put this Google Sites document above the Biltmore House box, I can click and hover where you get your crosshairs by those little dots and drag it to where I want it to be and drop it. So you can move these blocks around. The other thing that you can do, and I want to show you this because I think this is super helpful, is you can divide your page up into sections by using a text box and a little coloring. So let's say I want this section to be um, pictures. So I can make a text box and I'm going to say class pictures 
and I'm actually going to change that to a heading so that's a little larger. And you'll notice when I hover over this, I get a little palette on the left hand side. So I can actually emphasize this line or this box in a particular way. So I'm going to choose this dark one here. I want to really emphasize this. So I'm going to drag this and put it above class pictures so that now it's starting to divide up my page. And if I had more pictures and more boxes, I could put them underneath it. And maybe I want to do another text box, and this is going to be called um, Great Websites. I will make this match, so I'm going to make this a heading and also place this in emphasis too. So you can see, oh, I need to move my website under there. So now I have pictures here, websites. So if I preview this, it really does begin to divide up your page so that it has some um, division and is, is less one giant white line. Now the other thing that you can do is you can drag and drop the items that are in your boxes. So in this great website section, if I wanted this kid president video to be right next to the Biltmore House, instead of dragging the box, I'm going to actually drag this item and you'll see that I can actually drop it into a box. So now I have two things in this box, two very different items. And if I even wanted to put a different item here, I, I could fit all three of them. So you can start to kind of build columns. And again, you're able to resize them um, and place them in areas if you wish. Now, now this doesn't make sense to be class pictures, but I wanted you to see that you can start building columns. So this stops looking very boxy. So if I wanted to change the size of these two items and put these side by side, maybe this doesn't have to be as large because it's just a box with files in it, then I can um, change the size of this. You'll also notice that as I'm dragging things, let's say I wanted this calendar to be in the center. Notice when I move this, I get these lines that are helping me drag it, and now I have two um, blue lines on the side that are telling me I have equal distance on either side. So if I drop this, now I have this in the very center of the page. Um, so that makes it really nice if I want to be able to center things on the page without um, having to make them giant just to get them in the middle. So you can move these boxes around so that as you are now putting content into your page, it starts being um, less of a giant white line. Um, so I'm going to actually um, show you that here, maybe I don't want that text to take up the whole side, so I can actually shorten this text box and maybe I want this picture to go up here next to welcome to my site because I want this to be something that they see when they come to my site. So you can actually um, put things next to each other and use those sidebars to drag and drop. So if I wanted to take this back and maybe um, make this half and half, I can start making my page um, work for me so that maybe um, I'm dividing myself and making my things fit on my page a little better. So you can move them side by side. So remember, you can move the blocks themselves and then you can move the individual items that you've inserted and drag those and drop those as well. So let's talk about adding your email to your site. We have lots of teachers who want to place their email um, address on their website so parents can email them and that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. However, we do have a very specific way that you have to do it, which um, is actually a board policy. So um, if you want to know how to do this, back on the document that I showed you at the very beginning that's linked from our Google Apps support page, at the very end there's a link two directions. If you want to put your email on the site, follow these directions. So if you'll click on those directions, and I'm going to walk you through it very quickly, what you're going to have to do is copy this URL that's at the bottom of this page. Notice I copied that. Then I'm going to go back to my science 
um, page and maybe I want to add some text at the very bottom of this page um, that says email me. Okay, I'm going to make this a link by highlighting it and pressing the link button much like we did earlier when we were learning about text boxes and I'm going to paste in this link. But before I click apply, I'm going to backspace to right before that equals or right after that equal sign and I'm going to put my Google username. That is what comes before the at htpsnc.org email address. So if my email is awmcmillan at hcpsnc.org, then I need to put A.W. McMillan. For the most part, for most of you, this will be first initial, middle initial, last name. But you know whatever comes before your at hcpsnc.org address is what you put after the equal sign. Then you click apply. Now I want to show you what this does so that you'll understand. Um, it does keep your email private initially. So what it's going to do is the parent would click here and then they're going to get a form that they fill out and click send and that will go to your Gmail address. Um, do not go onto your page and type your email address on the page. So don't go in here and put awmcmillan at hbsnc.org and save it. Um, that is breaking board policy and a lot of people just don't know that so we wanted to provide you with those directions in case you wanted to add your email to your site. So we've only been working on this one page so maybe I need another page. So I'm going to go to the page tab and we're going to look and see what's happening there. And on this page tab you'll notice I have home. That's what this page is. The first page you create is always going to be your home page. But you do have the ability to make other pages. So let's say I need a homework page. So I'm going to click add page and I'm going to name this homework because I'm going to make sure that I post my homework assignments on my website so my students and parents know um, what's going on. So once I click done it starts building this page and over on the left I see that I now have a homework page. Notice that it doesn't come up right away with that giant header that it had before. You can change the header type by going back exactly where we did before and going into header and choosing the different items that you want. But I'm just going to leave this one for me, this simple short title, because I want my home page to have that really big banner and be splashy and maybe I want this one to be more simple. But you can do these any way you want and you'll notice um, that you can also, if you choose to put in a banner, you do um, get the ability to then change the image if you want. So you do get the same options on the top of each page. And I'm not going to go through this again with you, but on this page now I would go to the insertion menu and I would insert whatever I wanted on that page. So that now my homework page has information on it and um, as well as my home page. To toggle back and forth between your pages that you want to work on, you simply click on them from the page menu or you can even use the navigation menu that's starting to build for you and you can use that and it's always going to open up in that edit mode. So I'm going to go ahead and um, make another page because I want to show you something else that is really helpful. And let's say I want to make a page um, of information for students. And so on this page, you know, I've provided a lot of information. So maybe I'm going to, you know, type some text on here and I've got this information for students. Again, not a good example, just trying to show you some content. So I have information for students and then I have homework. So let's say for um, my homework, or for my students, I'm going to have homework, but I'm also going to have a link to um, some great websites that I want them to use. And maybe in addition to the great websites page, um, I'm also going to offer them some research resources. Notice I'm just making these pages. I'm not putting any content in there right now. I'm just actually just creating the pages. And then maybe for my parents, I'm going to have some information. And um, 
I also want to make sure that I have a page that has uh, my forms and policies on it. Notice I'm making a lot of different pages. So as I'm building these pages, um, it's kind of building a menu for me across the top. So let's talk about menus for just a moment. Um, there are two options for navigating your site and after you start putting additional pages in there you'll notice if you go up to the top and kind of move your mouse you get a gear on the left hand side. This gear controls whether you want your navigation to appear on the top or the side. It's already on the top but if I wanted it on the side what happens is if I'm on a smaller screen, I get what's called a hamburger icon, which means if I click on that, I see my list of pages on the side. If I wanted it to be on the top, I'm going to see it here across the top. Now, you'll notice once you start getting a lot of pages, when you use the top navigation, it starts getting very cluttered um, and you're eventually you're going to get a link over here that just says more. So if I make another page and um, I call this internet safety, maybe I want to give that information to my um, families. Now it doesn't fit anymore, so now I just have this more. There is a way that you can nest pages now that wasn't available um, a few weeks ago but we just noticed that it started working and we're super excited about it because we like the ability to nest pages and if you're not sure what that means let me show you. So you see how I have a, a heading for students and I have a heading for parents. One of the things that I can do is sort my pages into categories so that there's a parent page and a child page. Not parents as in classroom parents but parent and child sort of like an outline format so I have a heading and a subheading so to speak so let's say under for students these websites are for students so I'm gonna drag and I'm gonna drop this on top of students and notice how I get that blue line when I release it actually created sort of a folder and it put this great websites under that folder well these resources are also for students so I'm gonna nest that there and this homework is for students as well. So I can also bring that here and place that here. So now I have this homework, research resources, and great websites um, all in this um, for students. Well, forms and policies are really for parents, so I can put that under that. And maybe the internet safety information is also for parents. So I want you to see what moving those did to my menu. So now I have home, for students and for parents. Just like over here I have home for students and for parents. But now because I've placed those page inside those main categories and nested them underneath for students, I now have a drop down menu of homework, research, resource, research resources and great websites and under parents I have forms and policies and internet safety. So you kind of see that if you start to build a lot of pages, you may want to have some category pages that enable you to have a little nesting. So when your menu's on the top, it's going to look like this. Now if you have page nest, pages nested and you decide to use side navigation, it's going to look a little different. So let's see what it looks like. Now what you see is this little carrot that you would open up to see all the pages. So you really just have to decide what your parents are comfortable with and what you're comfortable with in order to determine if you want your pages to be nested or not. I'm going to leave mine nested and I'm actually going to choose to do my top top navigation since I've kind of shortened those menus but I do want you to show you I do want to show you what happens now that we preview this so I do have this menu across the top when I'm on the large screen view when I go to the mobile view in tablet form 
I also see that I have those drop downs. But when I am on a phone or small mobile device, it will automatically switch to that hamburger menu. That is so that on a phone you have the ability you have more screen real estate and I can see the entire title of the site and then I have my navigation that pops out only when I need it. So just so you know, even if you choose to have top navigation, it's going to switch to that hamburger menu you on phone view. So that's making pages and building pages. And you're going to edit those exactly the same way by either clicking on them from your menus at the top or clicking on the side and then adding your content to the page. So now we're going to talk about what to do when you're ready. When you have all this great content in there and you're ready to share this with parents and students, there is a button at the top that you're going to want to make sure that you're familiar with and that's the publish button. Notice that does not say share, that says publish. So I'm going to click on that and talk to you about what that means. You're only going to publish when you're ready to set your site free into the world. It's ready, it has the content you want on it, and you want to be able to give that to your webmaster so that they can link that from your school page. The first thing you're going to do after you click that publish button is you actually have to give your site a URL. That's the location where your site will live. Your site cannot have the same URL as anyone else in Henderson County. So you're going to want to type a name that makes sense and will be specific. Remember when we named our site and I said uh, Miss McMillan's science class? Well, there may be another Miss McMillan's class somewhere in Henderson County. So by naming it Miss McMillan's class, I run the risk of possibly someone else having that URL. But the way to find out if someone already has that URL is to start typing what you want your URL to be. So I'm going to say Miss McMillan's class. Miss McMillan's class. You'll notice you cannot use uh, apostrophes or quotations. There are certain characters you cannot put in a web address. If you do choose to use a space, you'll notice that it puts a dash. So this says Miss McMillan's class. If you get a blue circle with the white check at the end, that means that website is available. If it's not available, you're going to need to go back and change something about your URL. So I'm going to just imagine that um, I've put Miss McMillan's science class in here and that it's good to go. So make sure you have the blue circle and the white check before you go down to the next step. The next step is who can visit your site. There may be a time that you want to create a website that only people at Henderson County with a Google account can ever see. For the most part, however, you're going to want to say anyone on the web. This anyone at hcpsnc.org would be appropriate if you were doing um, a, a website between people for a specific purpose. A lot of times people will use websites um, just for projects or, or just for certain uh, events that only apply to people in Henderson County. I will tell you if you check anyone at hpsnc.org, only people who are logged into their hpsnc.org Google account will ever see it. So that's a rarity. So for the most part you're going to choose anyone on the web. This last piece is totally up to you. If you would like to include your site in search results on search engines, you can place a check in here, which means that um, if someone's using Google to look up your site, that your site may populate in a search if someone's searching for Ms. McMillan science class and they don't know the web address. So you can decide whether or not you want to, uh, that to appear in search. I'm going to deselect that because this is not a real site. So then after I do that, I'm going to click Publish. Now what I want you to notice is you get that publishing warning, like your site is publishing. You'll get this, your site has been published successfully. But notice that Publish button looks different now. There's a little drop down next to it and I want to talk about what's in that drop down. If you ever need to go back and change your Publish settings, you can 
click on Publish Settings and it'll take you right back to that box. The other thing that's under there that I would use now is you have the ability to view your published site. And let me show you why that's important. If I just go to Publish Settings and I look at my site location, do you see how there's an ellipsis there? I'm not even really seeing the entire website. If you don't know what your website's going to be, except for this last little part and you don't know the whole thing, you're going to want to go up to Publish and choose View Published Site so that you can get the entire URL address. That is the address that you're going to copy and paste into an email and send to your webmaster at your school when you're ready for your site to be published. They have to have the entire website address before they can link it to the site. It also has to be published before you'll get that URL. So um, that's a really important piece to make sure um, that you get. So you can copy this and paste it into an email. The last thing that's on that drop down is unpublish. If you ever want to unpublish your site and remove it from being available, you can click unpublish here, but you'll also want to make sure if you do that, that you let your webmaster know to take that link off the school site so that parents or students aren't clicking there expecting to get to your website and then get an error when they try to go there. So those are the published settings. Now, this is what I call a highlighter moment that you'll want to make sure that um, you're aware of. You've noticed as I've been working, Google is constantly saving what I'm doing. Everything I'm doing, it's just saving. And that's okay, it is saving. But I'm gonna show you what will happen if um, you don't click publish again. So I'm gonna add some text on here. And I'm gonna say, you know, here's your homework for tonight. And if I go off of that page to a different page, but I come back to homework, you'll notice it did save that text. It's there. It's saved. But if I go and look at the live site, the published site on the web, and I go to the homework page, it's blank. We have had people contacting us in a panic. I've got all this stuff on my website and it's not showing up. What you need to remember to do that is very different from other products is it is constantly saving. But if you make changes, you have to publish again. Once you click publish again, your new changes will go up on your website so that when someone refreshes the page and sees it, they'll see that content. Now, I want to talk to you about why there's the good side and the bad side. The bad side is we have people putting content and not republishing it, and then no one's ever seeing the content. So the bad side is you got to remember to publish every time that you have a change that you want to publish. Here's the good side. A lot of times I don't have a big chunk of time to sit down and work on a website. So if I want to take my time on a certain page and add some content to it and I start it but I'm not finished and I don't want it to go live on the website yet, that's good that I don't hit publish. I'll just have to remember that once I come back and I do finish working on it and I am ready for it to show up that I've got to click publish. So the good side is it does give you time to save your work in between publishes so that you can make sure that you're, um, you've got some, enough time to finish something before you publish it. But that is a highlighter moment. Publish when you're ready and publish every time you make a change that you want to put on the website. Okay, Even if you change one page, hit publish, it'll republish all of them. So I hope that kind of makes sense because that's super important. Publish, publish, publish. Now, the last thing that I kind of want to talk to you about is adding people to help you edit your website. At the top next to the publish button there is an add editor button. That add editor button is only people that you want to help you edit your site. This is not view only or comment only. This is add editors. 
Now, couple recommendations. If you are someone who needs a lot of support from your webmaster because making websites is new to you and you're, you know, a little bit nervous about it and you want some help, you may want to invite your webmaster to have edit rights to your site in the event you have something that you need them to help you with. The other thing that you might want to consider is if you team teach or you have a grade level site that you all want to do together, you can invite people to edit and you can all edit the pages together and it works very much like um, Google Docs collaborative editing where every one of you can be in a page and editing it at the same time. Only do this, however, with people you 100% trust that are going to be putting content on the web that um, that is good and, and correct and that you're not going to worry about something getting accidentally deleted or added that you don't want added. So make sure that you um, invite people that you trust and feel comfortable with. Those people will be able to add pages, delete pages, publish, unpublish. So that's the kind of rights you're giving to those people. So just think about that if you're um, a grade level person or you want to do a team site of doing this collaboratively. That way everyone is helping build uh, something really awesome. So again, this is going to be where you add people who can edit. Now, if you want to get back to your main Google Sites screen that shows all your sites, on the top left hand corner you'll see that Google Sites home icon and if you click on that icon, once you've clicked that home button it gets you back to the screen so that you can see all the cards of your sites. Uh, one of the things I want to point out is that if you go to the corndog menu that's right next to the site that you just created, if you ever want to remove this site, you can click remove and that will actually um, remove the site completely. Remember if you shared it with anyone that's going to remove it for them too. Um, so just use this sparingly but if you make a, a fake site and you want to get rid of it um, this is how you would do it. So if you've been doing this along with me and made a fake site you might want to remove it at this point and now make one um, that you want to use um, for real. Thanks for listening to us today. I hope you feel comfortable building a website, putting some content out there, and sharing with your students and parents the great things that are going on in your classroom. Just a couple notes. Make sure if you're going to do a site that you commit yourself to it and you don't overload yourself. If you start by saying, I'm going to put homework up every day, and you do it for a week and then you stop, um, that's going to reflect poorly on your site and it's going to reflect poorly on you. So make sure you don't bite off more than you can chew. Take a small piece, feel comfortable with it, get consistent with that before you add something else. Uh, but have a great time with this. If you ever have issues, um, make sure you contact your webmaster for help. And if your webmaster is not available, you're always welcome to email us um, and ask us for assistance. We'll be happy to help you as well. Thanks for joining us today.